Good morning. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, almost all, all of you got the confirmation what exactly and which state we are in, right? We are more or less compel, means we are getting some kind of compulsion from outer world or something which is actually controlling our behavior or our life, right? So, if you uh, see <clears throat> the last statement, what did he told? We are, we are, we have one step in animality. Do you understand that? What exactly the animality is? So, what is our, um, means, uh, have you ever observed our nature? Means, how we behave and how we act. Take some example. Let's say, all of you go to some market, any mall, any market you go, where there are so many stalls are there. Have you ever bought anything? Or every time you feel like I, I want to buy something, right? I want to buy, this is a new stuff which is not with me, I want to buy. If somebody is scolding you, you are similarly getting same anger within you, right? Have you ever hold your anger? If somebody is scolding you or uh, some kind of abusing statement somebody is taking to you, have you ever hold your anger? You have controlled your anger, right? Sometimes you have controlled it. And sometimes you react it, right? So, if you see all these behaviors, these are all animal behaviors. Animals see the food and they cannot control. If they are hungry, they will eat. They will always go and grasp, right? Beyond that, humanity means the human have more, much more host, right? Even though we don't have hunger, we don't have any um, appetite, still we go and kill something or we go and grab something to make it ours, right? So this is host than animal. And even the anger, if you see, if some uh, animal is attacking the other, other is getting angry and they are also attacking themselves and they are fighting. This fight every day you will see in the street, even in the parliament, everywhere, right? So, this all are animality if you see. At the same time, we have something within us which is divine. If we go and identify with a vastness, have you ever sit in front of a seesaw? Have you observed the waves? And how vast it is, how it has widened itself. Have you observed the sky in the night? How many stars are there and each star, how much distance it would be? The, uh, the ample of vastness, the, uh, the universe, if you observe, we will see our heart is very tiny and little spot in the universe, right? And within that, we are again very small human being. One, one, not even a dot. You cannot see in the world. If I put a dot, you cannot see from here. And our size is that much. And we feel, I am everything, right? Our relations, my image, my respect, everything I am. And I am so much concerned about myself that if somebody tells about something me, I feel, okay, something has happened. The entire world is losing. I, I, and I react against that, right? So all this vastness, if you observe, if you identify with the vastness, you will feel that vastness within you. So, when you see it in front of a sea and you observe and feel the vastness of the sea, then you can feel a silence within you. Right? Like something, there is no thought. You have seized your thought. There is no thinking. And some kind of peace within you. So, really, if you 
go deep within you there is a being there is a being which which we may never aware of any time we never be aware of that about that being which holds the divinity which has which is itself is the divine we call it as soul somebody tells it psychic somebody tells it atman somebody tells it bhagwan anything but it is the divine element within the human that's why sri aurobindo says our one step is in animality which we are in in the current state the entire world if you see there is a chaos nobody knows where what would be the next right and everybody is engaged with their own uh, means little small small needs and desires they are trying to satisfy that if that is getting deprived if they are getting deprived of that then they are reacting and the other part if you see if you are getting identified with the vastness if you are getting identified with the divine then you feel that vastness within you and the divine element within you so there are two lives actually there is a outer life which in the surface life we are always living in the surface life i see the face i see the angle and i am reacting i see the environment and that is getting inside me and i feel like a desire to buy something but there is another life if you will concentrate and live within that there would be a divinity that life is within inside us so our role our role if you see sri aurobindo says to discover that divine element to discover that divine element within you within us and get identified with that so that whatever the divine wishes whatever the divine will is will work according to that what is what is the purpose of our the purpose of our creation if you see the entire world if the creation is built why why what is the purpose some calls it okay this is worst world somebody created by mistake we should leave this world like munirishis and the sages right they used to still right they will get identified with the divine leave this body do they will go to himalaya and do tapasya and torture this body so that this body may die i can go and unite with the divine but that is not the purpose right the purpose is manifest the divine in this world in this life so we are now occupied by or controlled by various forces we should liberate ourselves by identifying ourselves with the divine element within us if you will get identified within the divine element if you will get identified with the divine element within you then you will feel that you are you are not getting more anger or you are not getting desires or you are not in a hurry or everything you will see in the divine eyes how the divine is looking you you will also see yourself and the others with the divine eyes that is the main aim of our life whatever the studies whatever the expertise we have if that is not contributing to discover our divine element within us then that is worthless mother tells us what is what is the real failure the real failure is if you don't discover your divine element the psyche mother tells it psyche if you don't discover the divine element within you in this life then that life is really a failure whatever you may be you may be success by outer stuff the real growth is if you have not grown with the divine qualities 
then there is no real growth. You have read so much thing and you go and join any organization or do a, uh, may, maybe you do medical or you grow as a scientist or you become a software engineer or whatever it is. But if you are always digressing from the actual aim, if it is digressing you from your actual aim, then it is a worthless life. And what should be our aim? We should find the divine element, identify with that, and whatever we do, we should do with the command of that divine element. Whatever he tells me, whatever the inspiration comes within, I should leave according to that. So this is what we wanted to communicate you guys. If you have any questions, then probably we can further proceed or try to answer it. Because there are so many things, there is a vast thing which Sri Aurobindo has revealed among us. But to understand that, we should go deeper and go at each level and read more, then we can understand. So this is the bare basic thing we, we suggested you guys. If you have any kind of questions, you can ask. So if if you concentrate enough, if you give time, when you do any, uh, let's say uh, take any bodybuilder or any athlete, what they do, they practice. There is some kind of exercise or some kind of practice they do. Right? You have to adapt such practice which is helping you to go deep within you, alright? So you have to spare some time. Like I said some example, like when you feel the vastness, you spare some time to identify with that vastness. So the our level of consciousness means the state we are in. If you, let's say you are getting identified with the vastness and the same time if any mishap happens, you, you may not react, you may not be able to react immediately as we are in the ordinary state. If you see the same kind of situation, you may react very immediately. If somebody, let's say, you are so, so much calm within you and there is no thought within you, okay? You are observing the sky and you feel a peace and somebody is coming, hey, what are you doing? Maybe the same statement make you react in the ordinary state. But in that state, you will be still calm for some time, right? So that is one way of practicing. So if you keep calm, then you will feel the voice, feel where is that divine element. You will try to discover that. You should aspire. You should, you should have an aspiration like, I want to find that. So spare some time every day and try to Go deep, try to be calm in whichever the means. Like if you do meditation, you are feeling calm. Then you can do meditation, you can practice meditation. If you feel like, no, if I do mantra chanting, I am feeling calm. Then, but the way it should be, till the point I feel calm, I should practice that. And then onwards, I should open myself and just listen. Just listen. Be in that state. Okay, there are various methods, various ways, even, even during work also, you can feel that calmness. If you are going deep and involve yourself in the work and do the work without expecting any result, you feel that I am doing this work for the divine, then also you can get identified with the divine. So the basic stuff, what we have to remember is, whatever we do, whatever we, we, means whenever we are finding any time, any spare time, try to, uh, means go deep, try to search that, where you are, where you are, you ask and aspire for that. You aspire whichever the Lord you are praying, you ask, you pray to them and ask them, 
I want to find. I want to find you within me. So that that should be our prayer, and that should be our. If you see, if your aspiration is so ardent, then it you may not get sleep also. Like when the exam is coming, you are thinking of exam, right? So when when you are actually trying to find the divine, then you will also not get sleep. You want to identify with that. You will always try to identify with that. Your effort will always towards that. I will just give one example, small example. Then I will stop here. You all know Swami Vivekananda ji, right? So Swami Vivekananda ji, when he went to his uh, guru Ramakrishna Paramahansa, right? then he asked, "Have you seen the divine?" He told, "Yes, I have seen the divine." Swami Vivekananda is asking to Ramakrishna Paramahansa, "Yes, I have seen the divine." So can you help me to see the divine? Ramakrishna Paramahansa ji. Dipped Vivekananda's head inside the water, and Vivekananda was trying to come out of the water. He was getting breathless. He was getting so it is difficult, right? He cannot stay within the water because he want to breathe. And she was getting, uh, I mean, uh, patting his hand and all, moving his hand and trying to coming out of the water. Then after that. Then he uh, left his and uh, left him and he came out of the water. Then he is asking, "Why did you do this to me? I am just asking to meet the divine. I want to realize the divine. Why did you do this to me?" Then he is telling the same kind of eagerness to get some breath. You should have within you to find the divine. If you have that same kind of eagerness, I want the divine. I want to meet the divine. I want to realize the divine within me in this life. If you have such kind of aspiration, then you will meet the divine. Definitely, you will meet the divine. Thank you. Any other? Any other questions you have? Anybody else? Nature has given us a curiosity. Should not seize it. You know, any little child, why they are growing so uh, naturally and so easy? All of a sudden, one day you see they are walking. All of a sudden, one day you will see they are talking. The next word, next word, everything they are grasping. Why you know? And they ask so many questions. Why? is the nature the mother nature has given us that quality a curiosity and that is why the man is progressing right all scientists if they will be satisfied in their life everything whatever is there i am satisfied i am okay very good then no progress right we are still we will be stagnated there we will remain remain still if you don't have a curiosity you cannot progress always you should be curious to know new new things then you will gain knowledge you will go and 